right, hey, what's up everyone? Sorry the shadows are a little bit weird, but um, I'm out working and I'm working in the van, the one that uh, I did decide to keep. Thank you for everyone's comments. Um, just finished up this detail on this Porsche Boxster right behind me. And I figured since I'm actually working out of the van now, it would be a good opportunity to finally give you guys a tour of the van that I use uh, or that I'm currently using. I'll do a tour of my truck later, but currently I'll do a tour of the van so you guys can see my setup, see the products I use, see how my kind of workflow and uh, go from there. So I'm gonna wrap this job up and head back to the shop and then we will go through it. Alrighty, boys and girls so we are back at the shop uh, so let's go ahead and jump into a van tour but first I want to thank today's sponsor Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. Explore new skills, deepen your existing passions, and just get lost in the creativity. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they're constantly launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. I personally have been working on trying to make my YouTube content and videos for you guys even better. So I've been, been enjoying YouTube success with Marcus Brownlee, also known as MKBHD. Uh, and he's got a full course on YouTube and how to create interesting videos for the viewers. But you can also take classes ranging from leadership and management, online marketing, and even just photography so you can amplify the usage of your online marketing uh, on Instagram and things like that for your business. Now Skillshare has partnered with me and is offering the first thousand of my subscribers who click on the link down in the description below a one month free premium membership to Skillshare. So remember, use the link in the description below to explore Skillshare and expand your creativity. Now let's get back to the video. All right guys, so here is my van setup. So as you can see, I did a pretty budget build on this. I wanted to get it, because I had the issues in the past with uh, putting too much money into this thing, I wanted to get a basic setup that was gonna function well and be cheap to get done. So here's what I did. First off guys, first thing I did was I used the holes that are in the van, right in the frame. Just put a couple of two by twos and ran a piece of two, uh, uh, plywood across the top and then covered that with um, some diamond plating and then a nice little aluminum finish right on the front end. From there, I went ahead and mounted a uh, hose reel as well as my air hose reel. And then behind that, I mounted a couple of uh, containers where I store my towels, towels, and these are great because they're stackable. You just release the hinge and they come up. Um, so we'll go through those in a second here. But on my doors, I did do just these really basic magnetic hooks. Um, so basically what I'll do with these, I'll, I'll hang brushes on them, a mask if, uh, if that's needed, and then also I'll leave a hook for the customer's keys so that I always have them, I always know where they are, they're out of the vehicle, so that I don't run the risk of accidentally locking the keys in the customer's vehicle. That's never a good thing, you don't wanna do that. You always wanna keep good track of where the customer's vehicle's keys are. All right guys, so now moving on to the bottom of the uh, van setup, we have my Predator 3000 watt generator. It's an inverter generator. I'll take you around the front of it. So we have it right here and it's super basic. I just have, uh, it's, it's nice because it is a push button start. So all you do is, you know, switch over to start, hit the button. I'm not gonna start it right now, but just hit that button, switch over to run, and you're up and powered. Again, 3,000 watts, so it's more power than really I need. Um, I can run everything all at once. My air hose, uh, vacuum, whatever, whatever I need. My pressure washer, it all runs at the same time. Let's head back around to the front, or sorry, rear actually. So from there, I just have it running to a power strip mounted here. Um, this is ground fault interrupt and all that kind of good stuff for water so um, it's got plenty of outlets and then it even has a USB charging port which is nice um, when I'm out and about if I need to charge my phone or my uh, airpods then it's perfect because 
I can right at the back of my vehicle. All right, guys, so now we're moving into the pressure washer. In this van, I am just running this Ryobi 2300 PSI pressure washer. Not crazy GPM. Um, I think it's, it's rated at 1.2, I believe. It doesn't have a total stop system, but while I'm using it, I'm constantly using it, and then I, and then I shut it off. So I'm fine with that. Um, I like this one in this situation because I'm actually only running a 50 gallon water tank here. So even though I typically like the heavier flow, the, the higher water flow, the higher GPM, um, in this situation, this one really does a good job. And I do switch it out with a larger orifice nozzle. So I am increasing my GPM probably up to about 1.5, 1.6. Um, and it's operating around that 1100 PSI. So that's totally fine. Um, I do prefer a little bit higher GPM, but for this purpose, it was perfect. I just took it off of the cart. As you can see here, the, the plate is still here for it and I just screwed it straight into the subfloor of this van and it's good to go. So from there, um, the connection point, the hose outlet runs that black hose right up top and then comes back up through here, connects into my hose reel. So when I need to work, I just simply unhook, roll it out and I'm off and working. When I'm done, it's super simple. I just roll it back up as it bangs across everything right now because I'm only doing it one-handed. Locked into place and we're good to go. That hose never has to come off, nice and easy. Same thing with my air hose. I'll go ahead and go around the other side and show you guys the air compressor that I'm using. So in order to get to the air compressor, storage is limited in these vans, they're small. So I have a blower that I just store right here on top. Just move that out of the way. I have my vacuum hose toss that over there and I have my vacuum I'm gonna be doing a video on that vacuum later down the road but that is my favorite choice for car detailing especially as a mobile guy it's got a couple of features that I really like so I'll go over that in another video for you guys uh, back to it guys here is my air compressor as you can see it runs 5.1 CFM at 90 psi so it's a great powerful unit even though it's in this nice small compact size um, you can hook up two hoses too. I only have one because that's all I need. And again, that runs through here and connects to my hose reel and out the back. So keeping workflow uh, simple and efficient is my number one priority. Okay guys, so next we do have my 50 gallon water tank. I have it mounted on a little black plastic pallet just to keep the water above, no matter where I'm working, right? If I'm working on a hill, um, this keeps the water above where the pressure washer is and keeps that, um, what do you call it? Uh, gravity fed system flowing. No problem with it stalling out or anything. Keeps the gravity fed system going and it works perfect. Um, after that guys, we do have, obviously I showed you the uh, blower. I just have a couple of uh, extension cord reels. Um, let's see here. Right here actually is where my extractor goes. It's, I have it out there right now but it goes right here, fits in there perfectly. And now let's go ahead and jump into the bins. All right, guys, so as I said, the way I built this out is it's on these stackable bins. So I can put another bin here and have more stuff if I need. But just in this bin, I have my basic towels. Um, these ones do have an edge to them. Um, so I use these mostly for my interiors. Um, if I need to do something on wheels, I'll use these guys. And then for my exterior stuff, I do switch over to these guys. Um, I, have gray, I have gray and blue, but they're edgeless. The reason I like that is because I just feel as though it gives us less opportunity to mar the paint while I'm, I, I'm polishing, get the, getting the paint perfect, and then you wipe a microfiber off to, to pull off all that polish. I don't want to have any sort of edge there that could potentially mar that perfect paint that I just, just fixed. So um, that's why I use these guys on the paint, these guys on the interiors, and I'll typically use these edgeless ones on the, on the windows as well. Underneath this one is where I keep my polishers. So I've got polishers. I have a, a M15 from Max Shine here. Uh, and then I also have the Max Shine rotary uh, for those cases where I need to cut in deeper and faster. And then I like to finish out with the M15. I typically only use the M15, that's my go to, but I like having that rotary there as an option. I also have my drill brush here. Pads are in here, applicator pads. Um, let's see what else. Got my 
dog hair removal tool, my lily brush, and a couple other ones like that. And that is pretty much it. So as you can see, everything stacks, oh, excuse me, everything stacks away really nicely and stays nice and clean. My water, this is water just uh, that I use for the windows, just hooks onto this, this bin, doesn't go anywhere and stays perfect. So I really like it efficiency wise. For setting this up in about three hours, one afternoon, and the cost of this shelf is all I put into it. So um, the diamond plating was the most expensive part. So I'm into it for maybe a hundred bucks, but the functionality is fantastic. Didn't take a lot of time to put it up. So really, really good. Now the hose reels obviously are more money as well. I'll link those down in the description for you guys below. And then just a few final points. I have a magnetic uh, glove holder and I keep an extra tip there for my pressure washer that's a 15 degree in case i need a little bit more power it's also a smaller orifice um, sometimes i'll use that on the wheels just to blast away any heavy um, brake dust um, in the middle here this is where i keep my wash bucket um, i only carry one bucket guys now i'm not doing a two bucket method and i explained it in a video previous um, but i'm just using the one bucket and i'm using multiple microfiber towels or wash mitts in that bucket and i'm never reintroducing them into that water so i'm never contaminating that water so i'm just using my foam cannon my uh, uh, pressure washer single bucket with multiple towels and i'm good to go efficiency is key guys and because i'm limited on space right i can't be carrying everything 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 um, so i'm gonna go ahead and just show you my chemicals real quick i will do a different video um, explaining each chemical and why I carry it, but I'm very limited on the chemicals that I carry. And for that reason, those chemicals need to be able to do multiple jobs that I need them to do. So uh, just really quickly so you guys can see, I do have them mounted on the doors. And this is great. This is the uh, Max Shine um, 32 ounce bottle holder, and it works great. They don't touch all the way to the bottom, but it's a nice padded spot and I can, I can push them all the way down, but um, actually, let's just do that. That's a Zep bottle, but all these other bottles are standard car detail branded bottles, and those go all the way down nice and easy. On the other side, there's a brush, wheel brush. On the other side, I have my, I have some bug off, um, just in case, you know, someone on a road trip and there's bugs all over the front end of it. Um, I have my foam cannon. This is my soap. Then I have 3D1 um, polish and glaze. Then I have my, this is actually um, not auto shampoo. Yeah, so this is actually not the bottle that it says it is. It's not Pearl Auto Shampoo. It's actually a compound from 3D products. It's their eight, uh, 3D1. Um, I like that product. These two get me through 95% of the vehicles that I would need. Um, if I'm doing any heavy like full blown paint correction, I'm doing it here at the shop. This is my mobile setup. This is getting 95% of the job done for 95% of the customers out there. 100% of the job done for 95% of the customers. If somebody wants a really, really high-end detail, full paint correction, we do it in the shop, out of the elements, keeping it nice and clean. Um, trying to think of anything else for you guys. The front of the van is very, very simple. Um, again, my extractor. Front of the van, place for coffee, place for water. That's all I really need. Um, I do have a backup camera installed. Little shelf up top to keep some invoices. And that is pretty much it, guys. Um, let's see here, anything else? Um, I don't know, I think that's pretty much it. So yeah, I guess that's it. Comment down below if you want to see anything specific. Like I said, I will do a more detailed video and go through the actual products that I have in here and the actual products that I use on a daily basis. But um, for today, I just wanted to give you that brief rundown overview of how I set up the van, what the functionality, um, is of it and how I'm able to get my workflow going. So um, Yeah, having that that power strip in the back makes things much faster for me Right here having my hoses on reels is fantastic the um, The power for my pressure washer and my air compressor are right here Just simply plug them in when I'm ready when I need them and I'm off to the races guys. It's super functional super nice the van gets great gas mileage. I know I told you guys I paid way too much for it, or I paid a good price, but then I had to put too much money into it. But so far, the functionality, the workflow, the gas savings, it's been a fantastic little van. So I'm really enjoying it. So hopefully everything stays great with it. Um, trying to think anything else for you guys. I think that should do it. Again, let me know if you have any questions. 
comment down below. Make sure to like the video, make sure you're subscribed, and please turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. And we'll see you on the next one.